Oof. Another day in paradise. I'm telling you, dude. Hey guys, what's up? This is Brian. Jesse. You're watching MMA the hard way in the car. Ready for Saturday? Man, I got, uh, I'm gonna have, like, I'm gonna have people over. Nice. I'm gonna uh, just be kicking back mm -hmm. and watching that thing on, on Fox. Just, I can't wait. I can't, I still can't get over how stacked the card is. Oh I mean, and every single fight could be either a main be the event best or co-main event. Heavyweight, uh, uh, best uh, lightweight fight. Uh, it's gonna be good. In a long it's gonna time, be great. I, think. Um, I mean, I'm just looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Nick Diaz versus Bando. I'm looking forward yeah. to Hugo versus Gustafsson, BJ oh, Penn boy. or you know Roy McDonald. I mean, just everything. I'm just I'm just ready for yeah, it. Yeah, Wyman and and uh, Wyman and Swick. Yeah, you know, there's they're really they're, people are starting to really talk about that fight. That, that, and you know what's amazing? The way Swick performed after being off for what almost two yeah. years, a little over two years. Just he just came back and you would have thought he just fought like on the last card before that. Yeah. I mean, he came back. He came back fresh and focused, and yeah. he finished. He yeah. didn't want to go to a decision. He finished. So, I guess the big news that hit today... Yep. Uh, according to right now, my little uh, galaxy here thing, uh, Forrest is out. Forrest is injured. Another knee injury. Dude, this is like, you know, on um, Inside MMA. Yeah. They had a doctor this week come in, and this is like becoming an epidemic. Well, he, here's the thing, though. He's talking about cross training, how they need to start cross training. Not only, well, yeah, but, you he know, people that for would that, that yeah, that would help that out. You know, that would help tremendously. But you know, people also forget that, you know, these guys are not just running; they're not chasing a ball. They're they're in combat. Yeah, they're, scrambling. Your yeah, body's in the take. You know, he was working wrestling defense. Oh. For someone like Phil Davis. Come on, his knee, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, here's the thing, though, that Phil Davis came in to replace, you know, Chael. Yeah. And now, you know, Forrest is out, so it leaves Phil Davis, you know, holding yeah, on. His whole camp is showing up. Yeah. Phil DeFries is uh, yeah. is going. Gustafson, they're all. Both those guys are Alliance guys. Yeah. Uh, they're both already there, so the, the whole camp's already made their... Plans. I do have a couple dark horses to bring in. Mm. Okay, what about Vitor Belfort? That would be pretty he sick. Just, he just came off a loss to John Jones. John Jones and Phil Davis have almost a similar body style physique. He doesn't have a fight book, right? Yeah, now. I mean, and and, and I, I haven't double checked because this just broke. I just I just got the little text right now. Yeah. I don't know if he's on a, some kind of suspension. I. I would gather it be this just the customary thirty day suspension. He's a company man. And he's you a company man. Step in. You know who I'm thinking? A strike force guy that has yet to make his light heavyweight yes. debut, Ovin St. Pro. Yeah. OSP. Mm -hmm. He fought uh last August. He he uh, injured his finger, knocked out oh gosh, who did he knock out? Um oh, wait, I got, got on right the tip of my tongue. Oh gosh. He knocked out T.J. Cook That's in August, yeah. Strike Force, and OSP got a good record. Mm -hmm. You know, he's only uh, I think got one loss out of like his last nine fights or something like that. And um, you know, he's pretty high ranked. I got the other, the highest ranked UFC light heavyweight that doesn't have a fight booked is James Tahuna. Mm -hmm. He last fought, he beat Joey Beltran. Yeah. At uh, last July. Um, don't know what's going on with him though. Don't know if um, I don't think he's injured. I don't think I've heard anything. I about that. I still think another one, Magalés. 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 Yeah. Uh, Bring he, him in. He fought in September. He looked uh, great too. Yeah, dropping down from yeah. heavy to light heavy. I think that was a really smart move for his body frame and his physique to drop down, less yeah. weight. You know, makes him much more faster and lethal. The other person I'm thinking of, he's already said it. He's coming back to 205. Um, what made him big and proud is Vanderlei Silva. Oh, man. 205 Vanderlei. You know, I mean, he's... Against I mean, Forrest. And they've never fought, huh? No, against... Uh, no, uh, Phil Davis. I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 Phil yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Phil mean, Davis. they've never fought. And could you imagine the complexity of that matchup? Yeah, because uh, Phil would have to use his footwork to get rid of those looping... Those yeah. Looping, uh, and, 
punches. And, and, and you know, you know, just like Vitor Vanderlei is also a company guy. Um, and you know what? He stated that drop that dropping down to 185 really, you know, it it, it, it cuts into his stamina, it cuts into into his strength, and plus you need a longer camp to drop down to the 185. At 205, it's much easier, much more forgivable. He walks around right around that right around that weight. So is he gonna slow down at 205? You know, he might slow down to a five, His but just... His legs are really susceptible to kicks. I mean, look at the what, didn't Forrest yeah. just uh, beat the crap out of his legs? I, I mean, I, I that would be a really... Or was it Keith Jardine? No, Keith Jardine was kicking his legs, but then yeah. Keith got caught, you know. Yeah. Um, I think Vitor or Vanderlei would be a really yeah. good matchup to bring up, you know, all the rest of the wants, guys, there, there aren't really any other guys. No, there. they're they're all tied up or they're all either from the same camp and they don't want to yeah. you know, they don't and want I wouldn't want no Brandon Vera, their yeah. teammates. I, I, I still think Vitor would be a really good choice cuz like I said, Phil Davis and John Jones have that similar physique. And you know, Vitor, you know, maybe it would give him a, maybe you could see the, the John, no one's comparable to John Jones, but maybe you could see the John Jones fight and go, okay, maybe pick up on something and, and use mm. it upon Phil Davis that he didn't do on, on, on John Jones. I don't know. It, it, it'd be intriguing, but I like your idea. Bring over some guys from Strike Force. Yeah. You know, uh, you, know you get another guy. You got uh, this guy, Carlos Augusto Filo. Yeah. Filo. Uh, undefeated, mm -hmm. six and zero. Oh. Yeah, you know these undefeated guys. They're always great to have them make a debut because everyone's like, "Oh, he's undefeated," and they want to be tested in the, you know, in the UFC. Yeah, what's I mean, what's? I mean, let's face it, it hasn't been confirmed or denied, but I don't know how much farther Strike Force is going to go past yeah, the January card. Pretty much the final. You know, event, so all these guys are going to be either transition, like when, like when UFC purchased. Pride, you know, they brought all the guys that they want over, and some of the guys that just, you know, they Phil want to Davis pay him out. Phil Davis doesn't strike me as the type of guy that would turn down a fight because the guy's not high ranked enough. You know, we've seen that before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that comes back to sting a guy when he turns down a fight. It makes you look. It makes you look bad. It's it makes like, you look bad. They're not going to call them gimmies. You know, they don't. You, I don't really think that UFC gives they've, gimme fights. I they've, mean, they've always said it. There's no such easy fight. In, in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, every now and then, okay, I, I see it. You see I mean, an angle. We've seen yes. these la late last minute replacements. Mm -hmm. But the way I always look at that is like, that's just part of the sport. It's not like they intentionally were giving someone a fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you are game to mm -hmm. be willing to fight anyone, anyone. on short notice, mm -hmm. then hey, you know, it, it goes both ways. You know? I, I, I think. I think um, I hope it doesn't get canceled out because you know he's been going through a long you know through the training Man, camp. I dig watching Phil Davis fight. I yeah, mean. and and you know he 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 pretty much you know he gets better and better every time he comes he's out. Fantastic. So, he's got like his signature moves like the yeah. Mister Wonderful. Mister Wonderful. I remember when I saw that and Joe Rogan quoted it. I remember that. Uh, yeah. I still think I'm sticking to my guns. I think Vitor would be a great uh. fight. I think Vitor be a, what a, a great fight. You know, I hope it doesn't get canceled. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, either way, Phil is not going to look bad in UFC's eyes if, if it gets canceled or backed off because he came in yep. to try and save the cards to begin with. He's ready to go. You know, now, yeah. in, you know, too bad he got popped for something. You know, uh, what's his name? Um, Tiago Silva. Yeah, Tiago Silva would have been a good matchup. Uh, but you know he's he's gonna be out for a while because of 420. Uh, you know what about I'm Minowa. Minowa would be good too. Jimmy Minowa. You know he fought Kyle Kingsbury yeah. last September. Mm -hmm. He's someone. It's you know he's not super high ranked, but he's still up there. I mean he's I think he's even ranked higher than Tiago Silva. You know I'm wondering. Uh, uh, you know well Rich Franklin. Got that devastating KO from, you know, Kung Lee. So there goes that. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's a that was a, a a 185 affair. You know, whether some you know you never know. Someone maybe from 185 could come up to 205, and uh you know and just try and save the card. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna want to take that fight? That's another thing. It's like you're not just talking about fighting anybody. You're talking about fighting Phil. Could, Davis. You know what? Could you imagine? If Anderson Silva stepped in again uh, after Stefan Bonner to fight 
Phil yeah. Davis at 205. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That would be nuts because yeah. he is he is currently reciting at 205 address right now. Hey, running out of time. I just want to thank everyone. We got new subscribers. Thank you so much. Keep it um, coming. Thank new you. New Twitter followers. Uh, again, check out MMA Elite. Uh, dig those guys. That is a great brand. Um, Head Rush, uh, also fantastic brand. And, um, you know, check out the last MMA The Hard Way episode. We did a, a welterweight, UFC welterweight great division. Great breakdown. breakdown. They, they're saying, everyone's saying, I've been getting emails from people all over saying, dude, this is the most comprehensive <clears throat> most comprehensive and illustrated uh, welterweight division breakdown ever. It, it was in and, depth, and uh, it was it wasn't like two hours or whatever. Yeah, you did it, it, you know, it, it was took quick. like yeah, thirteen it, minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah, and it took about two weeks of analysis to get that thing going. But I'll tell you, you know, it was really interesting. I'm going to do that to other uh, divisions, I think, too. Um, I checked out check out fightmatrix.com. You can get that world rankings right there. 205 would be nice to do since we're talking about it right now. Yeah, that's the thing with that division is so it's, much more deep. active and uh, you really got to take a snapshot of these suckers. At any rate, thanks a lot and uh, Thank you very much. Midweek episode, check you out next time. Take care guys.